الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلقنا وعلمنا ما لم نكن نعلم أحمده سبحانه وتعالى وأشكر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات صدق الله العظيم All praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify him and we thank him for guiding us we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for keeping us safe. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the good health that we are experiencing. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his bounties and his favors and his blessings upon us. I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadallah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Al-Quran that those people who believe their status, their position is elevated. And those people who have knowledge, their status is also elevated. يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah raises the status of the people of faith in the people of knowledge. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Innama, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man yuridillahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi al-deen wa innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al-ulama Verily, those whom Allah wants good for, Allah makes them learned about deen, about way of life, about their purpose in life, who created them, why they were created, and what should they do with this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, verily the ones who have the more fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones who have knowledge. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, so much effort is being placed by parents on the acquisition of knowledge. Even where we are living right now. A child doesn't go to school, he or she is considered a truant in the city or the state can come after the parents 
and make it mandatory for you to give your child an education. It's so important. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though he was an unlettered man, couldn't read nor write, he emphasized the importance of knowledge, the importance of acquiring knowledge. And he says, Talabul ilm farida ala kulli muslim wa muslima. The acquisition of knowledge, it is compulsory mandatory upon every Muslim, male and female. W what I want to remind you and remind myself of today, is that, yes, broad base, without any type of uh, exclusion, knowledge, seek knowledge. But the scholars of Islam, our scholars, they say when they interpret the, the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they remind us that it is so important for us to have knowledge of our deen. For us to have knowledge of Allah. For us to have knowledge of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When, when we look at families today, and we look at uh, the young ones, we see families making so, many, so much effort to make sure that their children have high scores. They excel in math and reading and science and social studies and all the sciences and all the academic subjects. There are those who would send them for some Islamic education. But many times we find that the, the importance is not being placed on it. We are seeing many of our young people not having the very basic knowledge of this deen. They don't know how to pray. They don't know the basics of ablution, making wudu. How can you pray to Allah, stand in a line praying and you don't, you don't even have wudu? Because you don't know that it was important that you should have ablution before praying. Some can't even utter our greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum as -salam. Some have never uttered Bismillah before eating or Alhamdulillah after eating. And then sometimes we see things happening to our children and we wonder why it's, it's, is it happening to them? Why are they in the state that they're in right now? 
They don't know the basic things to say to ward off evil from them. To keep away shaitan. That's the environment that we live in, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Where the importance is not being placed on acquiring the knowledge of Deen. Some use our madrasas as a babysitting project. And just send their children and okay, let the teachers take care of them. And you're making teachers frustrated. Because they know that you don't have or you don't put the same level of importance on your child learning to read Quran or learning the basics of Islam. And some of them are giving up. Some of our teachers are giving up in these madrasas because they, they're finding that it's, it's become so difficult. I assign your child something to learn at home your child comes back the next week and has, hasn't even, you know, even, even touched what I have given to him or her. But if your child goes to school, if he or she gets homework, make sure that the homework is being done so that he or she can present it the next day. Why, why this double standard? Our oh, Akhira, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it, it depends upon the knowledge that we have. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he prayed for useful knowledge. Give me knowledge. Rabbi zidni ilm. Give me knowledge that will make a difference in my life. Not make a difference in your life only materially. Because you're a doctor, because you're an engineer, or because you're an attorney and you'll make a lot of money. But knowledge that will make a difference in your life in terms of your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. will make a difference in your life in terms of uh, how you behave. This is what is important, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. We, we have heard it so many times about seeking knowledge. But, but I chose to remind you and remind myself, as you heard earlier, that the schools are reopening. And so much focus will be placed on your child learning that math and reading and science and social studies and other subjects. Make sure that you also put importance to your child acquiring the knowledge of Quran. The knowledge of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and reward those parents who at the same time that they give their children academic education, they give them Islamic education and they balance it. And it's not difficult. We have seen young ones who have excelled in school in their hufaz of the Qur'an. We have seen young ones who have excelled in school, in their academics and their delivering khutbah. They're teaching in madrasas. It's not difficult. Don't make your children play around with you and tell you that it's difficult. I have too much to do at school. 
Sometimes parents become lenient and say, yes, it's okay, bro, uh, my son, it's okay, my daughter, take it easy. Uh, you, you don't go to the madrasa for the next couple of weeks. You have too many reports and things to do for school. W where is the importance of Islamic knowledge? That which your dunya and your akhirah depend on. You cannot achieve success until and unless you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what Allah requires of you and you put it into practice. That's knowledge. You know, there, there, there are, when we look at knowledge, we say, one part of it is Fardul Ayn and another part is Fardul Qifaya. Fardul Ayn is compulsory in each and every one of us. What is compulsory? It, it, it is compulsory for you to know your Creator. It is compulsory to, for you to know your Deen, your way of life. It is compulsory for you to know the Qur'an, have some attachment to it. To be able to recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is required for the salah. <coughs> and children, they have... Uh, children, they, 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 they are able to, you know, take in more when they're young, they can memorize. They can, they, they can acquire more of the deen at this young age. You know, we, we see in, in many of the masajid today, the khatib stands up to give the khutbah, and you have children not even knowing the adab of the khutbah. They have their cell phone and they're playing with it. Or they're talking with each other. And it becomes worse sometimes among the sisters. That all they do is talk during the khutbah. It's because people don't have the knowledge. People don't understand what is right from what is wrong. They make their own criteria to say what is right from what is wrong. So important, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. That we use every opportunity that is made available to us to educate ourselves and to educate our families. And to educate ourselves and our families with regards to our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, people will go away and they will study, they will come back and you will have shuyukh and you will have maulan and you will have learned people. But everyone has that responsibility to acquire some level of knowledge of deen. And if we don't do it, we are failing ourselves and we are failing our families and our communities. So much effort is being put into, you know, organizing these places of knowledge. So much effort is being placed into bringing programs so that people can have more knowledge of deen. May Allah reward, you know, especially here I hear so many things are being done. May Allah reward the, the, the brothers 
those who have put it together and those who are, are you know those who are teaching may Allah continue to reward them but they don't want to teach to empty walls it wasn't planned for that it was planned so that you can benefit and your children can benefit and members of the community can benefit And you know what? A lot of times, many of the things with regards to knowledge, you pay for it. Many of these places, you don't have to pay. Or if you pay, you pay something very insignificant. And yet, people don't respond. Because we are not putting importance to our Creator and our connection with our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said about knowledge, and its benefit to you. And it bringing long lasting benefit. And you heard it so often, but sometimes, sometimes it, we just take it for granted. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, إِذَا مَاتَ إِبْنُ عَادَمْ إِنْ قَتَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ صَدَقَةٍ جَارِيًا أَوْ عِلْمٍ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ أَوْ وَلَدٍ صَالِحٍ يَدْعُ لَهُ When the son of Adam dies, any one of us depart this world, our deeds end, cut off except for three. You, you want to receive rewards until the day of judgment? Then look at what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said. He said, you pray for wealth. Allah has given it to you. So use it in order for it to bring blessings or reward for you even after you have departed this world. Use it for the purpose of education. Use it to build schools. Use it to give scholarships so that others can be educated. Use it to build hospitals, to build masajid. Whatever it is that people will continue to get benefit from it. Once they benefit, you will receive benefit until the day of judgment. And you know we have we have many of our many of our people they look at institutions around the world where children do not have the basics to learn. They buy books for them. They fund their education. That's charity that will benefit them continuously. They give scholarships to them from one year to another. The second thing the Prophet wasallam he said, Ilmun yuntafa'u bihi. Knowledge which benefits. And, and, and that's what we always should pray for. 
knowledge that would benefit us. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught us this dua. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una, wanfa'na bima alamtana, wa zidna ilma. O Allah, teach us that which will benefit us, and benefit us with that which you have taught us, and increase us in knowledge. Make that dua constantly, so that whatever you have, you will look to pass it on to others. And so long as they benefit and the cycle continues, you will benefit or whomever has passed it on, the source, the initiator, will continue to benefit until the day of judgment. You know, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, Ilmun la yanfa'a ka kanzin la yunfaq minhum aw kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Knowledge which does not benefit is like a, a treasure that is being buried and it is not being used. In years gone by, people used to take their wealth and bury it in the soil, on the earth. And so the Prophet is saying, if you have knowledge and you don't use it, that knowledge is likened unto wealth that you are hoarding, you put it in the earth and bury it. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, knowledge, it will benefit us if we pass it on until the day of judgment. And, and I want to say to those teachers and those who have been dispensing knowledge that don't give up. You have tremendous reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because everyone whom you have taught, so long as they benefit and they benefit others from it, you will receive reward until the day of judgment. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, the third category, Waladin Salihin Yadrulahun. Make make your children pious children. Give them good upbringing. Make sure that you give them knowledge of their Creator. You give them knowledge of the basics of Islam so that they can lift their hands and they can pray for you. So that every salah that they make, they would say, Rabbi Jalni Muqim as salah, wa min dhurriyati Rabbana wa taqabbal dua, Rabbana khfirli wa li walidayya wa li al-mu'minina yawma yaqoomu al-hisab. So that they would say, O oh my Lord, make me from among those who would establish prayers and from among my progeny. And O oh my Lord, forgive me and forgive my parents, whether they are here or they are not here, and forgive the believers until that day, that final day. If your children are not brought up, or if the children are not brought up in, in, in with that closeness to Allah, knowing Allah, knowing their deen, how, how do you expect that they will pray for you? How do you expect that they will still maintain that connection with you when you leave this world? 
so important, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. The struggle, it is a struggle that is really required and a struggle that will bring tremendous reward. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the one who goes out in the search of knowledge, he or she is in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he or she returns. And he also says that if one dies while seeking knowledge, the person dies a death of a martyr. So it's, yes, it's a challenge. Yes, it requires, uh, you know, sacrifice to balance our education. But remember, you are in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever happens, the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are tremendous. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, use every opportunity. Don't let it go on deaf ear when these brothers are talking and, uh, and making so many announcements and sending so many flyers and, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, so, so many things on social media. Whatever you can make use of, make the effort so that you can have more knowledge of the deen, so that you can have more knowledge of Allah, more knowledge of, this, of the Qur'an. And that your children, the more knowledge that they have, they will become more attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will become more attached to their way of life. They will know what is right, what is halal, what is haram, and they will practice it in their lives. That's so important. And it goes for both male and female. We have a great opportunity that females are not excluded and they are given that opportunity to learn. There are other parts of the world where they cannot go to school and they are prevented from having an education. Here, no. And females have been taking, uh, you know, they, they have been making good use of this opportunity, many, because some of them have better positions than men, and some of them have excelled in their education. Some of them have degrees that men are dreaming to have. So give opportunities to, to your daughters also to learn about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they can become good mothers. Al-Jannatu tahta akdam al-Ummahat Paradise lies at the feet of thy mothers so that they can be good role models for their children. So that they can teach their children al-Umm Madrasa. The mother is a, is a school. But she has to be the right school. The school that will lead the children to paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the importance of the acquisition of religious knowledge, knowledge of deen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to, to acquire such knowledge so that we can get closer to our Creator. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may He save us from the torment of hellfire. 
أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنات من كل ذنب فاستغفرون إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بدوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters I just as I speak about knowledge in the knowledge of Deen I just want to remind you and remind myself that Every one of us, we will leave this world. The knowledge that we acquire, it helps us to have a better understanding of our responsibilities. And it's so important for young people to have this understanding. We, we, we are seeing so many of our young people not having the opportunity to experience life the way that they would like in terms of living for a long time. We are seeing so many of them at a young age returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the more knowledge we give to them and the more understanding that they have of deen, we, we will feel a little more secured, you know, a little more comfortable that they spent their time in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as they return to Allah, they are returning with Allah being pleased with them. When they spend time acquiring this knowledge of deen, and they spend it in the masajid, and they spend it with ulama, and they spend it with, with people who will make a difference in their lives, that, that guarantees them the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillah. A young person who is brought up in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he or she is learning about Quran, when he or she is learning about the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he or she is learning how to make wudu and how to pray salah and, and the basics of Islam, that's in I, I, ibadah. That child is in, in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and if he or she was to go, return, you feel a little comfortable that my child has spent his or her days and years in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at it from that perspective, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And many of you know what I'm talking about. You look around in communities today, you see so many of our youth returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want them to return while they are in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and have mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us that which will benefit us and benefit us with that which He has taught us and increase us with useful knowledge. لَقَدْ أَمَرْنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيمِ يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى اللهم من خلفائه إلى بعد 
أبي بكر وأمر وأثمان وعلين وعن ستة الباكين المباشرين بالجنة وعن سائر الصحابة وعن التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على الدين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي بكم لكم تذكرون فاشكروا الله على نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم السلام